Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics with a fun and practical project. This is called the Americana Casserole Hot Pad. You know, I think this is just, it's wonderful. I get a casserole out of the oven and I wanna keep it warm. I don't have enough oven space when I'm cooking for a potluck, maybe a family gathering to keep get everything out of the oven at the same time. And no matter how much I try, it seems like timing is staggered. It's nice to have a casserole hot pad to not only protect my surface, but to keep my dish warm. I want to make sure I'm serving nice warm food to my guests uh, um, every time we have a gathering. So this is really fun. This is a cut loose pattern. Uh, so I'll just be showing you a portion of this to protect the intellectual property and their copyright of their really nice uh, pattern. But this is the front and the back. What's included, we have a kit available if you wanna do the Americana version, or maybe you wanna just pick up the pattern, use your own fabric. And the stars here that really dress this up, of course, supposed to look like an American flag, is using the Creative Grid Strippy Stars tool. That's the part I'll be going over with you today um, and showing you how to do that because that one's not as intuitive. Sewing strips together, easy peasy. We've done all of that as quilters. Um, inside your kit, you'll also be getting the casserole dish hot pad from the Gypsy Quilter. It's got the insulated batting. That's what helps preserve the heat and keep your dish nice and warm. So the Strippy Stars tool, we're gonna to take a little bit of a, a glance at that, how to read that. And I wanted to show you that it can not only make this size, but many other sizes as well. So inside the Strippy Stars tool, you will normally have a much smaller strip of instructions, as well as kind of a guide to what this is capable of doing, the sizes. This is kind of an exploded view so that it's easier for you uh, to see. The Strippy Stars tool will make a finished block size. This is our little block here. This is the smallest it makes. This it will finish at three, unfinished at three and a half, of course, with the quarter inch seam allowance, but will make as big as 13 and a half unfinished. So the, a very versatile tool, I love that. Multiple sizes, finishing at three, four and a half, six, seven and a half, nine, 12 and, uh, 10 and a half, 12. Um, that's a nice one. And 13 and a half, super versatile. So I wanna talk to you first about how to read the tool. Of course, you have instructions included when you uh, go ahead and purchase your Strippy Stars tool. So as we examine our, uh, this is what it produces. This is it kind of an exploded version. You can see you have your center square and your four corner squares. And this is where the action and the focus is, is making those very unique uh, sections of the block that give it that strippy star tools. And this is a very forgiving tool because the points would do something called float. They don't go all the way to the edge of that block. Notice that right here. And that is specifically designed by Creative Grid for that reason. And it's a really great asset, especially if you're a beginner and you struggle for points to come together. So I'll uh, be sure to emphasize that as well. Inside our instructions, here we're now on the three inch finish. It's saying that we're gonna cut four squares for our star points. I'm going to emphasize that in just a moment. And four corners and one center, those will all be cut to one and a half. And then we have some strips that are going to come into play. So I have squares and I have strips. That's what's going to create these four sections. That's the only thing we're going to be focusing on right now. One thing that threw me when I first started using this tool is I thought when they said star points, they were talking about, in this instance, it would be the white portion, and it's not. And that threw me. When I first made my first block, it was 180 degrees opposite. The fabrics that I thought would be here ended up here, and those were there. Still cute, but not what I was going for. So when we say star points, it's the blue. So in this instance, you're going to cut eight squares out of this to the one and a half, and then your strips right here, cut strips at least this wide, one and a quarter. Notice it said at least. 
If you've got one and a half inch strips lying around, two inch strips lying around, it works. No need to cut those down, but they do need to be at least one and a quarter. All right, so we understand that. Now, when we get ready to mark our fabric, since we've decided now these are our star points, our blue, the first thing that you'll do once you've decided the size you wanna make, and of course, then you've cut your fabrics, on the back side, and you'll need to use a permanent pen. Put that friction pen away. You know I normally have that on set, and I didn't even bring it, because I'm like, I, if I have it, I'll use it by mistake. <laughs> we will be ironing this. Of course, we know with friction pens, they remove with heat. You wanna get a permanent marker, and I've got a Micron pen. So you might not be able to see the flow as much on this size, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. We're going to be going with this portion of our Strippy Stars tool because that told us back over here on our instructions that if we're going to have a three inch finish, we're going to have our one and a half inch star points. And that means we're going to be needing right there, one inch finished, one and a half. So this is the section we'll be using. Notice it says one and a quarter inch strip. So even if you lose the instructions, they're right here. But I'd still keep those instructions handy for reference because of the step that is coming up. On the other uh, larger sizes, it's easier to see that float. Notice those lines coming up right here. That's what's setting that line off of those corners and helping the point to float up and off the seam allowance and be kind of in the middle, more off the seam allowance of the block instead of coming right to the center. It's very subtle on the smallest block. So you're, you're barely gonna see a float on this, but it is there. Now I'm gonna set the line on the bottom of my square and I'm going to draw this line. And it's just set barely off of those corners. That's the float. I don't know if you can see that. That is not going straight into my quarters, corners. Here, if I was using a bigger one, that would be almost a quarter inch off of my corner of my square. That's the float. All right. It's just a neat feature of that tool. You're gonna to continue marking four of your uh, blue squares per star. And then with your strip, I wanna point this out. This is where we're gonna be looking at our instructions. And this is going to shift for the first side, we will have our points, our delta, pointing down toward our belly, toward us. And we're setting that about a quarter of an inch off our seam allowance. Don't worry if that is exactly a quarter or not, just in the visual ballpark, and you're going to pin those together, leaving a gap. Now I've done that ahead of time, just to save us a little bit of time so you could see what that looks like. The point is down, and that line is running parallel to my selvage, approximately, and I've pinned those. I'm gonna go sew that. Now we'll cut these apart. When you get ready to press, so many times we're used to, you're like, how do I press? Do I press that to the outside or this to the outside? Keep this in mind. Your square that you marked on will always stay flat. And this, the white is what will press away every time. So I'll continue doing that, cutting those apart. For our next step, because it looks kind of strange, you're like, where are we going with this, Jen? <laughs> I understand that. This is where we are, and now we need to trim. We need to trim that away and kind of reestablish our footprint. So you're just gonna put a ruler here on this. You don't wanna be taking anything away from your background. You're just removing this excess. 
So now that you've got half of that done. So let me just complete that with the others and then we'll move on to the second portion. You'll be needing to use another strip and your points will now be moving in the opposite direction. So now that these are trimmed up, we're gonna to go to the next page of our instructions. And before, remember how we had that point pointing toward us? Notice now for the second portion, now we need to rotate that so that the point is now up and to the right. Again, we'll grab our strips and we will line up the line, our drawn line. That's why we had to use that permanent marker and be again approximately a quarter of an inch away and spacing them all the way down. I'll just do a couple here because I want to, I want to do this with you. I want to sh show you the trimming again. I'll just do two. We'll sew on the drawn line. Again, keep the blue down. The white is what presses away. And we flip this over and once again, we're trimming this off to make this point. Now some people, and I was one of them, may be tempted, let me next trim this and then I'll tell you what that temptation is. And a, they specifically speak to it in their pattern. Some people are tempted to lift up this flap and trim this away. What they have said in their pattern is to, to please avoid doing that because this adds a lot of stability to this section and so to leave that on. I know our normal is to trim that away, right? And they said leave that in place. Once you have those done, you'll lay the, out your block and then our assembly as we uh, position those together, of course, quarter and seam allowance. And because there are a lot of things going on in this center portion, we press the top and bottom rows to the outside here to the middle, and when we sewed everything together, all seams were pressed open, and that's how you make the strippy star block. Such a cool block. You'll make four of those. You've got some extra pieces out here on the ends, and then of course you've got your strips that make up that, and you'll repeat that for the back side. So really fun. You know, when we go to casserole, or when we go to casserole, when we go to potlucks and family gatherings, um, it's nice to not only bring food, but warm food and how fun. You'll be definitely be getting some compliments on your casserole carrier and people will be asking you how you made it. So thanks for giving me a few minutes of your day to show you how to use the Strippy Star tools to make the blocks going into our Americana casserole kit. I'll see you soon on another shabby video.